Hello, and welcome to Intro to Mar, part two. So uh, I made an initial Intro to Mar video um, last year, I believe, uh, despite the fact that I had almost no Mars on hand. The only, the only two I had were both from Burgundy, which is the, the most common place you're going to see Mars from. And I had to pair them up with uh, some, some grappas from Italy and also one from Evanston um, here in Illinois. Um, in the meantime, though, I've been trying to get my hands on Mars from other areas of France to do, you know, a little bit of a part two here. Um, and I got a bunch. Uh, a lot, most of these are not available in Chicago. These two did just show up, the, the um, uh, Jacques Collas. Um, uh, so we're going to talk about those. And a bunch of these uh, are available elsewhere in the country. And if you were in Europe or uh, if you have friends in, elsewhere in the country, or uh, in Europe who can help you out a little bit. Uh, so we're going to walk through uh, these. We, um, well, just to back up a little bit, uh, once again, what is, what is Mar? Basically, it's French pomace brandy. It's, it's brandy made from the leftovers from pressing uh, uh, grapes uh, to get, to make wine. Um, Right. So so uh, you and you might say, OK, well, that's that's grappa, isn't it? Yes. And no. I mean, I mean, grappa is is uh, has gotten more popular over the years because most. So there are a couple of differences. Most grappa is unaged. There is some re reserve grappa out there and it's terrific, but most of it is unaged. Um, whereas most mar uh, has actually seen at least two years in wood. Um, you know, you go to the northeast and a few other areas there. That's an exception. But uh, most Mars is aged. Um, it's also the the regulations are a little bit tighter. Um, uh, you still have to use smaller stills, and you know this is a, this is it is not a hugely industrialized category yet. Not not to say that Grappa is, but it's it's sort of more modernized than than Mar is. Um, a lot of Mar is still made by you know people out in their sheds with little tiny alembics that their, you know, great grandfather left them. Um, and the third thing is Mars just more, kind of more obscure. It's, it's less in demand by, you know, the, the old, um, the, even by the old European men. Um, it's just not a category people think about. And so if you see it, generally that means, you know, um, uh, well, we'll talk about what the, the distributors had to take a bet on it. And distributors are not stupid. They're not going to. They don't want to lose money. They're not going to bet, bet on a loser. So generally, Mars tend to be pretty good. I was impressed with the the two I did in my first video, and it was enough for me to go go out and buy a, a horse load of these others. So, I've already um, poured these because I don't want don't want you to sit through that. I'm going to add a few drops of water. So all of these, except for the middle two, uh, are bottled at 45 percent. So if you're listening and not watching, what I just did was add about four drops to the ones that were 45% and maybe like a drop or two to, the, to these ones in the middle. So I was just good to go, to go down the line. We, got a, we have a Mar from Provence. We've got a Mar from Alsace. We've got uh, a Mar from Champagne. Uh, we've got a Mar from Languedoc, so sort of far south, southern, kind of, I was going to say southwest, but more sort of middle southern France, near the south Spanish border. Um, and then two uh, Mars from Burgundy again. So we're going, going back to the Mar de Bourgogne. Um, all right, so I'm just going to hammer through these in order. We're going to start with this, uh, I don't know if you can see, the, there's, the glare is not great. Um, Cordelier. Mar de Provence. Um, this is kind of cool. This is uh, uh, first. It's the only. It's the first uh, Provence Mar I've seen. So Provence, obviously, in the far southeast of France, um, not really known uh, as a you know a spirit producing region, but they do do stuff. This also has a nice box. There you go. Um, uh, so this is, uh, it's all, all made from entirely organic grapes. So if you're looking for a uh, all organic spirit, here you go. 
Uh, the grapes, it's actually a mix of red and white grapes. There's, um, oh, and I didn't write up my own. It's, it's like a Grenache Syrah, uh, Grenache Blanc, um, Viognier, a couple of other white grapes. That, that being said, I, I suspect um, that most of this is made from, from red grapes just because, um, well, they're, they're listed first in the blend and in sort of winemaker uh, um, norms, the, the, the grapes that list, get listed first tend to be the most, you know, the ones with the most emphasis. There's, uh, Ravance also just grows a lot of red wine. Not to say the whites aren't good, but it's, it's more known for the reds uh, and the rosés. Um, all right, so let's stick our nose in this. Uh, probably bottled around 2019, something like that. Uh, double uh, distilled in an alembic. Um, 45% ABV. It's very, it's, it's very fresh. It's very, um, tropical, uh, lots of lots. It's very, it's lovely. It's, um, there's lots of kiwi mango, um, and just a lot of wildflowers, just masses of wildflowers. Um, something, uh, almost bready, not, not, not bread, but almost the caraway seeds you get in, in like uh, rye bread. little um not not grapefruit but more grapefruit peel like if you you know took off a peel of your grapefruit and um uh and a tasting note that i sometimes describe as hippie toothpaste it's this mix of sort of fennel and uh, mint and other herbs that uh, kind of you know work together there's definitely a hippie toothpaste component in this um, there's some tea components. Tea components are very common in Mar. Um, like a puer tea, some really light puer. Not, not, since it's not the, you know, expensive, like $200 an ounce stuff. This is like, you know, the little, you know, stuff that comes out of, uh, uh that you, you buy at a grocery store and it says puer on the box. It's not really, but it's, you know, it says puer. Um, and then some, some nice stone fruity aspects, some, some, uh, some peach, uh, a little nectarine. I mean, grape skins, uh, obviously, because um, it's made from grape skins. There's a little bit of a magic marker thing going on, um, and some f like fresh car interior, like you you just bought yourself a new Honda. I mean, it's not a hugely deep nose, but it's really nice. Um, it's very fresh, ref just refreshing. Um, on the palate, ah, see, so here's the thing: Mars are always going to be pretty good on the nose. I've never, I've, I've yet to have one that did not excite me aromatically. They, they, that's just what they're good at. Um, this one is a is a big step down on the palate, though, and that's that's a little bit of a problem. Um, it does have a nice creamy mouthfeel, but still, I mean, it's okay. So I'm getting a little bit of a, of a anise thing, almost like uh, an Iraq, you know, the, um, the Turkish aniseed based, um, uh, spirit where you, you put some water in and it gets all cloudy because aniseed oils don't, don't hold in, in water very well. Um. You get some peach again, some like uh, it's the peach fruit, but also just like the the skin, the peach fuzz. Wildflowers again, grapefruit again, more still more the peel. Um, there's a kind of nutty note, uh, but it's also floral. It's 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 a kind of orjo note, so a little bit of a mai tai thing going on. A lot of white pepper, a lot of white pepper, kind of a chalk dust kind of component too. Um, that puer tea component, the hippie toast toothpaste thing again. I'm just repeating the, the nosing notes, aren't I? The nose kind of follows from, from or the palate kind of fell, follows from the nose. It's just less exciting, less explosive. It's nice, it's nice. The creaminess aspect of this does make me think 
that this would age really well. And that's that's something I've, which also makes me think that that it's it's uh, there's a lot of red wine grapes going in this. It's it's hard to make a mar that sort of uh, holds up without aging when you're starting with red grapes because uh, if you made a red at least if you made a red wine out of them because you know. Uh, the the grape juice is stewed on on the grapes to make the red wine. There's just not a whole lot of life left in the. I mean, there's life left, obviously, but there's not as as much left in the in the skins in the pumice as you would starting with a white grape. Um, I would give this eighty four out of a hundred. It's nice. It's a it's a terrific break from. I mean, anything else you're drinking. I mean, I could I could actually see mezcal fans getting to this. Um, you know, if you really like those sort of flu- fruity, floral agaves, you, you would probably like this. All right, but let's move on um, to the, I believe this is Mete, because there's, a, um, there's an, an apostrophe there, or an accent, I mean. Um, yeah, uh, so this is Jean-Paul Mate. Um from Alsace. Alsace, very famous for its, um, I shouldn't say unaged mar, but unoaked mar. Um, this is, I know it's it's transparent. This has actually been aged in steel for, they're saying, six plus years. So this this was, you know, in a neutral uh, vessel, just, you know, developing, growing um, uh, as a spirit, just, just not taking on oak characteristics. Um, Let's see, entirely from Gewürztraminer, Mar de, de, de Alsace Gewürztraminer, um, which is a very important Alsatian grape. Um, and uh, yeah, so Mar, uh, Met, Mete, one of the most prominent um, Eau de Vie producers up there, and they make a Mar too. Uh, I don't know what to say about this. Um, again, traditional distillation, all that stuff. All right, here we go. Mar de, uh, of, of Gravitschermeer. I mean, a completely different world. I mean, as much as I like the aromatics on, on this, on this uh, Cordelier, I mean, this, this is in a different world altogether. It, this is, um, wow, that is a gorgeous nose. Um, okay, lychee fruit. Lots and lots of lychee fruit, which is a very common uh, component in Gewürztraminer. Here, it's just been turned up to like 15, though. Um, there's like a the tropical fruit thing is is still there, but it's it's more of a like a tropical fruit bubby, bubble gum kind of aspect now, which I like. I like um, flowers again, really like an entire flower shop, man. Um, and it's lightly smoky, like you like some of the flowers you like lit them on fire. So it's a flower fire with lychee fruit, and and um, and you know like kiwi mango bubble gum. Um, slightly plasticky. It's got a little bit of a rum agricole thing going on. I mean, fresh herbs too, like a lot of fresh herbs actually. Like like I mean, just in, like basil, oregano, thyme. Not really any mint in there, but those, I mean, definitely some some um, savory herbs. Kind of throw in some some grape bubblegum now, too. Less prominent than the tropical fruit bubblegum, bubble but still there. Um, grapefruit peel again, some old socks, weirdly. Kind of mingling mingling in with the, uh, uh, the, the flowers on fire note, so it's socks and flowers on fire. Um... Some dry erase markers, but nice. It's just very like like minerally, like rock dust. Um, and there's a kind of or like an herbaceous orange thing, like a bergamot orange. This is a huge. No, it's it's ginormous. This is a big nose. And it's always shifting. To, like there's always a little different things coming out and then disappearing and then coming out again. Terrific nose, like world-beating nose. Um, on the palate, I'm still feeling the finish on this. Wow. 
Hold, let me, hold on. Um, one more time. <laughs> This is a hell of a spirit. Um, God damn, that's good. Uh, okay, so uh, it's both. Okay, so let's start out with this. This is extremely complex. The finish holds on forever. I'm still tasting this. I, see, I feel like I'm still tasting the first sip, actually. It's still going. Um, it's both very complex and at the same, you know, Serge Valentine will sometimes say Moorish. Like, I want to drink more of this. It is extreme. Like, some some Mars do the annoying uh, uh, have the annoying habit of of um, just having a wine cork in, meaning you can't actually recork it after you've had whatever you want to have. Um, this doesn't do it because, it, uh, but you could, but it would actually be well suited to that because this is a thing where if you put it on the table in a in a in, in, in and open it up in a room full of people who enjoy spirits that are good, like it is not getting through the night. This is extremely drinkable. Um, I haven't even started describing what this tastes like, actually. So, lychee fruit. Okay, again, follows from the nose. That's that's going to be a pattern with these. Lychee fruit again. Um, uh, flowers. Um, that bubblegummy thing, the tropical fruit bubblegum, but also flower bubblegum now. Um, and this kind of ex very grassy characteristic. Um, like grassy herbaceousness. It's not just the herbs now. It's, it's also just some, some dried grass in there. Yeah, the herbaceousness is really ruling on this, on the back end. It just kind of come, gets really grippy on the, on the finish. It's terrific. It's, you know, fresh grass. It's dried grass as well. Rosemary, basil, thyme. Fennel, some oregano, um, but then there's those little like uh, uh, like rum agricole kinds of notes. Floral plastic, it's a little you know smoky thing. The the smoky socks, flowers, a little burning plastic like like um, you set an action figure on fire. A little bit of that. There's a zip of like a like a lemon pith kind of thing. Just tons of stuff going on. Tea, again, again, tea is going to be a common note on these. Kind of an Earl Grey thing. Like, you're, you're getting that twist of bergamot in there again. And there's this kind of, like, nervous minerality that's just, like, this, you know, rocks. They don't want to settle down in my mouth. It's very tingly in my mouth. Um, God, this is good. Uh, this is a 90-pointer. This, uh, Mate, um... Mar d'Alsace, Gewürztraminer. This is a 90-point spirit. It is, I think it might be the most expensive spirit on the table right now. Uh, I think this probably retails over 100 bucks if you can find it. I did not pay that much. Um, but I'll tell you what, this is this is worth it. Um, it is it is worth that price point. Absolutely. Um, and God, it is just so compulsively drinkable. I mean... This is good. Okay, we're off to a, we're off to a good start. Uh, we're we're doing we we're at eighty four and ninety at this point. Um, so I'm excited to move on to my um, Mar de Champagne. This is a sample from um, my friend Crin on the Aficionados Discord server. Um, so this is a, a, a Dumangin a Mar de Champagne. It's a six year old, five years in um, a standard. French oak, uh, Queris rubber probably, plus a year's finish in an ex Bordeaux cask, an ex red Grave cask. Um, it, this has been bottled at uh, forty percent ABV, unlike the previous two, which were forty five. Um, so this is a little bit scary to me because in the past I have not liked red wine finishes. I find they make uh, the spirit a little bit too leafy, and they sometimes add like a an unpleasant red fruit strawberry kind of thing to it um uh so i'm a little bit worried about that i'm a little worried about the 40 percent bottling strength too but you know mainly the red wine thing um all right so here we go oh and the, the grape blend on this is it's all um it's again 
white and red. We got um, 39% Pinot Meunier, which is a, it's mostly a grape you see in Champagne. That They're pretty much the only ones who use it outside of some, some nerds elsewhere. Uh, 20, uh, I'm sorry, 34% Chardonnay and 27% Pinot Noir. So it's a lot of Pinot uh, Meunier. You don't get, usually get that a lot in, in Champagne blends. Okay, that's an interesting nose. Um, so it's, it really smells like a, like an Irish breakfast tea, like a slightly more, you know, aromatic breakfast tea. Um, but then, like, you, you drop some, some fresh forest tree leaves into it. Like, uh, it smells very leafy. And there's a uh, like a dollop of fresh tar in there too. Like you just picked up some road tar and put it in your tea along with the leaves, and that's kind of what this smells like. There's some ch there's some um, cherry mingled in there too. A lot of cherry actually. Um, so again, um, you're putting some wild cherries and some dessert cherries, you know, in in with your tea and the leaves and stuff. Uh, some markers. A lot of coffee on this too. Like a shot of, you know, espresso from Paris or something. Um, orange peel, um, something chocolatey, but a little. It's like a, so there. Uh, there was an endangered species line of chocolates that had this this dark chocolates that was infused with mint, and that's kind of what I'm getting on the nose of this. It's like dark minty dark chocolate. And then maybe a little bit of like a, a grape bubblegum thing in the back. Um, okay, you know, this is not a terrible, the, I can tell the, 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 uh, the 40% is kind of fudging things a little bit. The problem with this is it's, it's a good nose, but you know, with Mars, I expect really, really good noses. So this is a little bit disappointing and I'm worried about what it's going to do on the palate. Okay, wait. The finish is kind of nice. Uh, the finish has this kind of um, um, minerally toothpastey thing going on, which is kind of fun. Uh, but other than that, there's not really a whole lot going on. Let me try this again. Um, okay, uh, so you're gonna you're gonna take some some cough syrup. Some, like leafy cough syrup. So it's it's cough syrup you've infused with leaves, fresh leaves. Um, some some uh, like slightly rustic coffee, like it's like stovetop coffee, like uh, one of those little what are they called, bialettis or what whatever they're called. Um, stovetop Italian coffee. Some a lot of cherry actually. Um, so Kirsch liqueur. So we're getting some some uh, some cherry pits in there along with the rest of the cherry. And then I kind of, it's a kind of a dry finish, pleasantly so. Uh, leafy wood tannins, kind of ch cherry of all kinds, um, more leaves, and that kind of, you know, minerally toothpastey note. Um, it's, it's not terrible. Uh, but I mean, okay, I, I remember the, the price point for the for a whole bottle of this is something like 70 bucks. And it is not it is not a you know, I, I do I do not believe this is worth that that sort of price point. Oddly enough, I think the, the red wine finish actually works pretty well with this. Um the the leafy cherry aspect kind of is working in tandem with the spirit. What's what's really hurting this is the 40% bottling strength. It just feels, you know, kind of, you know, everything feels smudged and out of focus and kind of not sharp. Again, it's not, it's not the, far from being the worst thing in the world. Um, but I would give this 81 out of 100. And um, I think there are better off uh, things 
you can get in that in that same price range. All right, moving on. Um, this is a fascinating one. This is a uh, Mar uh, du Languedoc um, by uh, Domaine de Pouze. I think uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Master distiller Francois Cathala. So this is um, uh, apparently in Narbonne, which is um, you know, kind of down there near the near the near the uh, the Spanish border, uh, on the eastern on the eastern side, of uh, of that bit of France. So kind of kind of you know, really towards the middle of France, um, but in the in the south. Um, and uh, this is okay. So this is interesting because it's from 1975. Look, so this is a vintage release, and in, if you're in Europe or have European friends, you can buy this for depending on where the euro is between 60 and 70 bucks. Um, now, uh, it is bottled at 40%. Um, I have no idea what grapes are on this, but I mean, it's, it, it's, it, everything about this says small production. Like, look, there's no back label. They didn't have the time to put a back label and everything about this says, you know, the grandkids, um, you know, took a day off of work at the, at the bank to come and bottle granddad's, you know, mar for him. Um, like that kind of thing. Uh, now this this can part of this should should raise some caution, right? Because there are a lot of these um, vintage Mars out there, just because there's not a lot of demand for them, even less than for like stuff like vintage Arm Armagnacs. Uh, and um, so that should raise some alarm because vintage sells people, you know, want uh, want things with year, specific years on them for anniversaries, for birthdays, for that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, that can be an invitation for uh, negotiants and distributors to bottle some real crap, to find some, um, you know, dead casks uh, and or over wooded casks and just throw them in a bottle and make some for cheap and make some money off of them uh, just because they've got the right year on them. So this is this is very old spirit. Um, for, uh, bottled at 40 percent. It could have gotten down there sort of honestly, just by the old honest method of uh, something aging for, you know, low distillation strength and aging for decades in a wet cellar. But, you know, they could have actually just brought it down there to make, make more money. Um, all right, so we will see. All right, uh, Pouze, um, Mar de Languedoc, 1975. Okay, this so uh, uh, this is not crap. Let's start with that. This is actually a terrific nose. Um, lots going on. Okay, maybe not as explosive as the Mate, but I mean, this is for for something that is you know has spent so long in oak. This is remarkably fresh, and the oak is there. It's it's making itself known with this, the coffee notes in particular. But you can tell this is a Mar. Um, Grape skins, obviously, but then, like chalk dust and 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 kirsch, um, you know, cherries, but also the pits of the cherries, wild berries, a lot of wild berries, actually, just tons of it, and then like tea notes and tobacco notes, actually, a lot of tobacco notes. This smells like perique, which is um, absolutely my favorite tobacco in the world. It's this sort of pressure cooked stuff they make um, in a tiny, tiny little portion of the South. Yeah, preek all day long. And then tea, um, Russian caravan tea. So a little lapsang in there, a little oolong as well. And it just kind of keeps going. Orange peel, uh, old coffee grinds, topsoil. Wood smoke, but it's not hardwood. This is almost like pine wood smoke. There's a little bit of a green aspect to it. Flowers, pressed flowers, um, something uh, slightly vegetal, like like um, like fresh beets that still have like the dirt on them, and um, like Cuban cigars, like hardcore uh, Cuban cigars, like Cohibas or something. A little fennel in there too, as well. Um, not as much, just like little. Lots of little notes here and there. 
This is a lovely little note. It's a, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like the 40% is really hurting this too much. Again, not as explosive as the, as the Mate, but it, you know, has a, has a delicacy to it, which I, which I am falling in love with a little bit. Um, on the palette, Home run. Absolute home run. Jesus. Um, yeah, this one <coughs> is going way out of the park, up deep into the stands. Oh, God, this is good. Uh, so 40% is, it does not feel thin at all. Um, oh, don't want to knock over any glasses in my enthusiasm. I, yeah, this, this, I would bet this got most, like, you know, got its way to 40%, sort of the old-fashioned way. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually threw this in, in, um, in like, a glass demijohn or something for a couple of years because it was just losing too much, al too much uh, ABV. Um, uh, in oak. Um, the tannins are, the oak is there. The, the tannins are, are grippy, but... Um, I don't think this is a particularly active cast because it, it was it was in here for decades, and it's not ripping my face off with tannins. It's it's gorgeously balanced. Oh, it's it's so beautiful and so rustic. <coughs> berries, all the berries, just mixed berries, blueberries, blackberries, cherries. Um, you know, raspberries in there, but it's also like, it has this, the, the, they're, they're like, they're fruity berries, but they're also sour. There's a sourness to this, which is tremendous. There's, and it's not even like all like a fruit sour. There's like a kind of like a, a mango lassi aspect to this. So you're getting the sour of the mango, but there's a little bit of like a, like a dairy sour, like a yogurt sour in here too. Um, And the tobacco notes are killer. Endless tobacco, perique, the cigar thing, um, some some really old burly in there. There's a kind of a of a nuttiness, a kind of green, uh, leafy nuttiness. And then the tea things are in there as well. Uh, uh, Russian caravan, white tea, puer tea too. A little bit of puer, real puer this time. Um, some other fruits, like pear skins, um, uh, actually a little pear eau de vie as well, uh, plum, prunes, uh, kind of like a, lots of cherries. But it, it's a, like almost like a pop rock thing. Do you remember pop rocks? This is, this is like tobacco and wild berry and tea pop rocks. Um, and then the, again, the dried, like the, the, the drying tannins mingling with the fruitiness and the sours and the tea notes on the finish and throw some rock dust in there too. Absolutely impeccable. This is terrific. Um, one of the best brandies I've tried ever, ever. Um, this is a 91 point brandy, 91 points. Okay. So we're, <laughs> so Mar is looking really good right now. Can I, can I repeat like in the European market, this sells for somewhere between 60 and $70. So you're, it's not, you know, not just, it's not just fantastic. It's not just 1975. This is, this is actually a budget offering. Go buy this. Um, Holy crap. Um, well, well done, uh, Francois Cathala. And well done, whoever the hell is bringing this in. This is great. Um, yeah. Hell yes. This is, this is why I do this. Um, right, right here, this bottle. Uh, I am so happy right now. All right, let's, uh, let's move on, though, to the Jacolets. Um, 
Jackalosa, sorry. Um, I can read French. I actually read uh, sort of medieval French pretty well. Uh, I, I did some scholarship in that area. Um, but damned if I can't if I can't pronounce it. All right, moving on to the uh, first. The uh, this is a budget offering from Jacolo, uh, who is uh, which is a very big um, Marta Bogon producer. Um, so this is uh, uh, the the Little Mar, four years old, uh, entirely Pinot Noir, forty five percent ABV, but it's the same base as this as this big boy. We'll get to in a minute. Um, uh, bottle, bottle at 45, but I mentioned that. So we're, we're moving up in the world. Um, uh, and not expensive. This, you can probably buy, grab this for around somewhere in the mid 30s uh, in the US. And actually these, so these two are, are actually in the Chicago area. So you can, if they're in Chicago, they're probably on the coast too. Um, all right, let's start off. Uh, Le Petit Mar. Petit Mar, sorry. Okay, uh, much more dessert-like and less um, funky and rustic than the um, the previous one. It smells like chocolate fudge that's kind of been infused with grape. So grape, grapey chocolate fudge. Um, but there's a little bit of like a like a dirty, earthy note to this. There's um, some topsoil, some um, grass, like just you know hasn't been dried or, anything, or mown or anything like that. Just fresh grass. You just lay down on the lawn and smell it. A um, little caramel, a little uh, sprig of mint in there too. Fresh mint. Um, how do I put this? Mass market coffee? Like uh, um, a nice, nice cup of Starbucks Sumatra. Heavy, like that, you know, that heavy, dark Sumatra character. That kind of coffee, but a little bit of tea too. A little, um, we're getting that that bergamot character back. We're getting just getting some Earl Grey in there, and there's a little bit of like a like a sour blueberry note too. So we're not entirely, you know, worlds away from the um, the Pouze. and a little bit of sort of grape bubble gum in the background, along with the the grape fudge. Um, it's very desserty. It's it still has those, those little earthy rustic touches, but it's it's um, I could see this being a, a you know a, 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 a digestif that old European men would really enjoy. On the palate, I mean, oh, also I should note before I I try these, there's a reason I put these last, and you're gonna see it right now. Okay, so this is something I talked about before. If you have a spirit that is a little bit sweet and a little bit too sweet, you want to put and, and you're doing a whole lineup, you want to put that last in your lineup as far as you can, um, because nothing throws off your palate like sugar. I do believe. Well, okay, so let's let's start with this. This is pretty sweet. Um, it could be they're just getting it that way uh, uh, by the cast they're using. I don't think so. I think this is probably dosed. Not obnoxiously so. Um, it just gets a little bit cloying, a little tiny hint cloying on the finish, and that's just probably my palate. Um, so we're getting, you know, Mar by way of Remy Martin here, if you like. Um, not out of control. Golden raisins, white pepper. Um, a little rock dust, a little like sandstone dust. That grape, grape chocolate fudge thing again. Menthol. Tea, white, like white tea. And, you know, a little a couple of coffee grinds. And a kind of a nice, pleasant, leafy uh, dirt. Uh, complex herbaceousness um, on the back end, on the finish. It is a little too sweet for my palate, but this is actually pretty, pretty solid. Uh, one more time. Uh, 
Yeah. I, hmm. Okay. So I would score this um, an 84, but I would give it a minus because um, that the, the sweetness is bugging me a little bit. Um, so 84 minus out of 100. Um, that being said, this is actually a, a, a pretty good value. You know, for 30 odd bucks, uh, this is a great way to get into the category. Um, just be careful if you're drinking it in the context of other things, because, you know, again, the sugary thing is going to throw off your palate. Um, but definitely competitive with a lot, with a lot of the Armagnacs in that price range and murders a lot of the Cognacs in that price range. Um, well done, Jackalo. Um, all right, moving on to the big boy though. Um, I don't know why they're selling these in liter bottles, uh, but they are, and there's a big obnoxious box, which I didn't bring. Um, so this is the, uh, uh, Jacolo L'Authentique, which is basically the, so it's, it's, uh, uh, uh batches, uh, between seven and 15 years old. So, se so seven years old, again, all Pinot Noir, again, 45% ABV, um, and, you know, again, probably bottled in 2020. Also available in the Chicago area, probably a little, a little bit more prominently, too. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's presented as basically the, the, the Little Mar, but, you know, bigger. The Big Brother, if you like. On the nose, though, it actually comes across more subdued, which I would imagine is just an, is, is an effect of uh, the greater oak uh, component. Yeah, it's more coffee driven this time. Um, lots of coffee, coffee everything. So um, coffee grinds, you know, cup cup of coffee like um, Starbucks Sumatra again. Um, also some um, something more aromatic, maybe some um, Costa Rican coffee alongside there as, as on a second cup. Um, a little fresh mint, a little sandalwood. Hint of hint of prune, hint of um, just like you know, uh, boxed lunch lunch school raisins. You know the things with the the in the red boxes. Uh, some dark chocolate, some dates. Actually, the dates are more prominent than the prunes. Actually, um, honey like a honeydew honey, like a very heavy honey. Uh, rock dust again, um, and a kind of like a like a cinnamon and cardamom sort of note. Maybe maybe a little bit more card cardamom. It smells much more woody. It's not necessarily better for that. Um, yeah, hold on. Yeah, I th I actually think I so there's. You know, if you like your if you like your wood, you're probably gonna like this this nose better. But for my nose, I actually prefer the the little the little petit mar a little bit better on the nose. And on the palate, ah, okay. I don't think this authentic is very authentic. Oh, Jesus. That is a lot of sugar. That is way too sweet. Um, almost syrupy. No, it is syrupy. Let me, oh, well, Jesus Christ. No, let me think of some nice things to say. Um, there are some nice things going on. Um, there's a kind of nice, uh, fresh Italian roast coffee grinds kind of thing going on. A lot of caramel, caramel raisins, um, some chai latte in there, some, um, a lot of fig, uh, some fig Newton too, alongside your, your regular figs. And some nice, you know, um, British afternoon tea where, which, where you've added like five or six lumps in. Oh, Jesus. I don't know if, they, if it's this sweet just for the U.S. version or if it's 
like this sweet all around the world, but this is mega sweet, Jesus. And that wouldn't, the problem is that the sugar is actually drowning out all, a lot of the good stuff. Um, I can tell that what this is supposed to be is kind of a woodier version of what, what the Petit Mar is doing. That's, you know, that's kind of the impression I get. It's just so hard to read that because it is so goddamn sweet. Um, oh, this is a really hard one to score because, I mean, I, you know, I said this one was kind of a little on a little bit sweeter side, a little bit dosed maybe, but sort of not, not and bugging me, but not all that much. You know, not out of control. This is out of control. I mean, this uh, L'Authentique is just over the line in terms of its sweetness. Let me try the, the Petit Mar again. I'm not sure if I would like the, the little little one better. Um, if it was, wasn't was just, you know, less overtly sweet, but... Um, actually, I think I'm pretty sure these, these would be a tie if they were dosed at the same level. But um, yeah, geez, this 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 big bastard is, is ooh. so I would be giving this um, like a probably like the same territory, like 84 ish. But I mean, it, it is like the 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 extra little bit of sweetness is just so much exponentially ruining this that I'm going to drop this down to the 70s somewhere. This is like a 79, 78, something like that. Gah. Oh. Ooh. I mean, as a dessert liqueur, perfectly acceptable. As, you know, like a like a sipper graded on that scale, I'm gonna give this 78 points. I am extremely disappointed. Um, in this effort, this is, this is a terrific producer, right? And it's not an inexpensive bottle by any means. Um, but I, I'm going to encourage people to go buy the Petit Mar because this is the real value in bunch. Um, yeah, wow. Okay. But you know what? We ended, we ended a little bit, a little bit weak, but, uh, um, you know, we, I, I would say, okay, forget about these. Forget about, forget about the, the Marta Champagne, even the Marta Provence, which is fine, right? Um, and definitely that last one. Here you got, I think, three winners. Um, this Mate is, is fantastic, 90 out of 100. This um, Pouze is magic in a bottle. Go buy this, 91 out of 100. And this is not, you know, as good. Um, this little... Uh, Petit Mar is terrific value. Um, 81 minus, uh, and these are, you know, I, I would, all three of these are worth buying. Um, for, you know, forget about the others for now. They will stay down there until the end of time. Uh, but these are great. Um, and that's kind of all I got for this. Do you know how awesome you are for, for watching through this? I've been babbling for over 40 minutes now about Mar, and you're watching it. That's awesome. Like you, you are not just going out and, you know, buying your Belvini or your, you know, I don't know, your freaking um, bakers or whatever, whatever the hell the Wall Street Journal is, is writing about these days. You were looking into weird spirit categories and finding values and trying to get educated about what's out there. And that's great. That's, that's, that's why I made this channel. These three are why I made this channel. Um, I am very impressed with all of these, and they are not anything like what you're drinking right now. Although I, I could, I could see like rum fans and and mezcal fans getting into all of these. Honestly, um, I mean, you know, obviously brandy fans too need, should be looking into this. Um, and that's all I got. You were awesome, and Mar is great. And thanks, for, thanks for watching, and cheers.